everyone, it's Ivan with KipAdger.com here today with my loadout from Desert Brutality 2020. If you're unfamiliar with Desert Brutality, it is a two-gun competition put on by the guys over at InRange TV as well as KE Arms. It is a lot of fun. One of the things that I think is really unique about it is the way they have all their divisions set up. So they have a classic division, which is 1946 and prior, your rifle and pistol have to be from there. And then within that, they have a classic auto, semi-auto guns, and then classic manual. So lever guns, bolt action, stuff along those lines. Then they also have a retro division, which I ran. And retro division, I believe 1947 to 1986, I think. Again, pistol and rifle have to fall in there. And then they have a Kalashnikov division, also have a scout division, and then a armored division. And I think by having those different divisions, it actually adds a lot to the competition, makes it a ton of fun. But I will go ahead and go over what I was running in both the retro division as well as armored plus P division. You can wear pretty much whatever you want out there. Some people plain clothes, other people like cry combat uniform, other people dressed up full period garb, which was actually really cool to see to include helmets. And I decided to go a different route. Previously, I had shot in the 2019 North Carolina Tactical Games. In it, I used the Brownells Retro M16E1. Really fun rifle. For that competition, everything I had was basically like 1965, uniform, web gear, everything. With that, I was also shooting a 1911. I knew I was gonna be shooting another Brown Eyes Retro Clone Rifle. Didn't wanna shoot a 1911 again, kinda of already did that. So I was like, what should I do? Well, I have a HK P7M8, which fits in that time bracket for retro, but doesn't really go with like green tiger stripes or something like that. So since the pistol's classy, I was like, why not just go classy? And I decided to end up wearing this suit fine Italian wool. This thing was a lot of fun. I ended up wearing it for retro with my coat and everything like that. And since I was having fun with it, I decided to go ahead and keep wearing it all four days to include Armored Plus P, during which I just took the jacket off, still wore the shirt and tie. The last day of the competition, day four for me of competing, and man, I ended up tearing the knee on it. Kind of a bummer. I'm gonna get it fixed. This thing should live on, see another day. As far as shoes for it, I ended up wearing these Black Limbs Boulder Boots. These are the all leather ones. As someone pointed out in the video, fashion police out there, yes, I did have a brown leather belt with black shoes. Oh my gosh, people, some people. To include me, I guess. Thank you, fashion police. But one of the cooler things that I didn't need to use was my cufflinks. I have a set of these, they're made by Sparrow Lockpicks and this piece in the back that basically flips, keeps your cuffs where they should be. You can flip this guy back straight and it's a handcuff key. It's pretty cool. As far as iPro goes, usually start off in the morning, it would not be very sunny. So I ended up running these. These are my Smith Director Elite clear ballistic lenses and then when it got sunny this old pair of oakley something that again i have prescription lenses in because i don't wear contacts wore those and then ear pro i ended up with these i think they're the surefire ep5 maybe but basically in-ear surefire hearing protection not a huge fan of over ear depending situationally especially shouldering rifles though these are just really easy. They can't get knocked off, things along those lines. As far as my retro loadout, I ended up, because I wasn't running a chest rig or anything like that, I ended up wearing this belt. This is a belt I've had used for years. It's by Beltman. And because I just needed basically a low pro rig, wore this and used some Blue Force Gear 10 speed belt pouches. Use these to carry my P7 M8 mags. And then these guys right here running, again, keeping it retro, the 20 round Brownells AR mags. Also because it was usually 
below freezing, like below 32 degrees out there in the morning, Arizona mornings. I ended up breaking these guys out. These are the first spear OCG, I believe, operator contact gloves. They did a good job. Still plenty of dexterity for shooting pistol. Speaking of pistol, in that retro division, as I mentioned, I ended up using this guy. It's the HK P7M8 squeeze cock. Pretty cool pistol. I did run into a issue with ammunition. For the retro division, I was shooting the 147 grain by Minuteman Munitions, 9 mil, and also their 5.56, 55 grain. 55 grain did amazing for me. In the retro, in this pistol, day one, I had a bunch of problems. I don't know if it was, well, I'm basically, I have no idea ultimately what it was, but I believe it was a stacking intolerances between probably hard primers, primers maybe set a tiny bit deep, and this just not being tolerant of anything outside of like perfect German engineering, because this was made kind of at the apex of that. So because of that, I ended up with some light strikes, basically rounds that wouldn't go. Fortunately, especially during one of the stages where you're shooting around basically a ballistic shield, and I was having malfunctions, like it wasn't firing. So with other guns, I would have to basically take my arm out or do some sort of manipulation. Beauty of this squeeze cock, I would just squeeze it and be like, oh dang, cock it again, and keep doing that until it fired. It was a drag, but it is what it is. I ended up later shooting Day two, I guess, I ended up shooting some of the SIG 125 grain. Worked flawlessly. I took that ammo to include rounds that did not fire in this. And the next two days after retro, competed with exclusively that pistol ammo in my SIG X5 Legion. It all worked flawlessly. Again, something weird with this pistol. I've had it happen before with one other ammunition. It's pretty picky. That ammo works fine with pretty much any modern pistol. As far as holsters, I ended up using this by PJ Holsters. When you're being active, the last thing you want is your pistol to come out. Not a lot of companies make holsters for P7M8, probably even less with actual active retention. So I ended up opting for this one, which is a in the waistband. What it allowed me to do is have the tension that is already built in the holster coupled with me being able to cinch my belt really tight and actually made for some difficult times drawing this out but it absolutely was not going to come out even when i broke into a dead sprint which is what i was looking for for my rifle in the retro division i ended up running this this is brownells retro clone xm 177 this is a lot of fun one it's incredibly light it's like just over five pounds i think which is really nice especially more and more modern guns adding all kinds of stuff to them they get really heavy really fast one thing i will say shooting the iron sights on this compared to like even their m16 e1 clone definitely appreciate longer sight radius this does work i made it work i don't really like, even though this is period correct, it's basically a conical front sight post. I much prefer the just squared ones. For me, whatever reason, my eye, it seems easier to pick up and get my hits with. As far as a sling, ended up using this. Edgar Sherman design, two point sling, easy to adjust and nice lightweight, complemented this rifle. Well, that was my loadout for the retro division. I also ran the two days in armored plus P division. It is kind of an analog to Finnish Brutalities division, which is basically an analog to their military loadout for kind of like active reserve, stuff along those lines. Think military loadout. To that end, you obviously need armor. 
For that, I ended up running this right here, which is the Spiritus low-vis plate carrier. And because I needed ammo, I ended up throwing this on there. This is their micro fight chest rig with their 762 inserts. I had two 20 rounders in here. And then depending on if I needed it, I could also stuff other mags in the front as well. I ended up wearing this, did a really good job for me. The way it's actually set up as far as divisions, you can wear any plates that are ballistic rated. So it behooves you to have really light ones. These are ballistic rated, but they're more or less for tactical games where you have to meet like a 15 pound weight requirement. But the way Desert Brutality is set up in their rules, it's really open. So even if you don't have ballistic plates, you can wear like metal plates or XYZ, basically equaling 16 pounds. It's set up to where no matter what, you could compete in it if you want to. The other thing you needed was a helmet. Did not have to be ballistic, but it actually had to be bump rated. So it couldn't be, I don't know, some like plastic toy helmet or something along those lines. I ended up wearing this ProTech helmet. It did a good job, didn't add extra weight and met the requirements. Then I'm GoPro on there, and it worked for getting footage as well. That armor requirement is the only differentiation between the Scout Division and Armored Plus P Division. For both Scout as well as Armored Plus P, think of it as like a patrolling loadout. So every, each stage, each event, whatever you want to call it, you had to start with basically the same gear to include four full rifle mags two full pistol mags, and then you needed water, med kit, all these different things. So for that, I ended up running this belt by Arbor Arms. And on here, I have some of the, I believe they're made by MDOM, these mag pouches. These are 5.56 mag pouches, but they obviously work for 7.62. And I ended up running two pistol mag pouches and then these two on my belt. So if need be, I would draw from here and then restock off of my plate carrier if that needed to happen. For holsters, I ended up running this right here. It did a great job right up to the very last stage. Uh, honestly, it still worked for me. It's actually a great holster. It is by Squared Away Customs. They make custom holsters to include stuff that you may have a hard time finding like this for the Legion X5 with a Surefire X300 Ultra. It has this hood on here and the last stage one of these screws backed out and that died on me still works because you still have retention there and i reached out to him afterwards i said hey this happened i said sorry that happened and showing up on my doorstep i had replacement screws as well as some loctite so i will get that squared away other things i ended up running on this belt by arbor arms because I didn't want to run it on a plate carrier or in a backpack. People definitely approach it different ways. But one, a med kit, this guy right here by LT Creed. Nice low pro, contained everything the med kit needed to contain. There was actually a list as far as gear that needed to be in it. Then also had a tourniquet on there in this i don't even remember who makes this tourniquet holder it's pretty clever though lift it up then you have access to your tourniquet i have a soft tee in there that again was on the belt another going back to patrolling you need water and you had to carry a liter of water so i opted for this again on my belt one liter nalgene and in this outdoor research insulated holder which I basically used so that I wouldn't beat myself up with this Nalgene bottle on my belt. Some people wore Camelbacks. I found this ended up working for me. And then lastly, to round out kind of that scout loadout patrolling, you need a knife with at least a four inch fixed blade. So I threw this guy on there by SOG. It's their desert dagger. And I also made sure to throw some essentially inner tubes, big rubber bands, on here because the last thing I wanted was this thing coming out and the retention on the sheath is not that great. In the Armored Plus P division, you could run optics on pistols, unlike in the Scout division. And I opted for this guy right here. This is the SIG X5 Legion. Pretty sweet pistol. 
definitely appreciate going from the retro class to Armored Plus P where you can run modern everything. Ended up running 21 round magazines in here. The Romeo 1 Pro definitely made for easier shots, especially working around that shield. And yeah, I did much better with this. To include shooting the spinner, even though I didn't get it, I got a lot closer with this than I did with my P7. And lastly, rounding it out, I ended up shooting this in Armored Plus P. This is the AR-10 by American Defense Manufacturing on it. I have a Attaball 1 to 10, their Attaball X, and a Bobro mount, Surefire SOCOM 762 Mini suppressor on there, and running the Contour Sling by Lunar Concepts. I will say this was way more gun than I needed. Because you had to start every stage with four full magazines, Four full mags of 308 gets pretty heavy pretty quick, but this thing absolutely did its part. At one of the stages, I think it was the second stage on day one, I was kind of disappointed. I missed a lot more than I'd expected, and I felt I should have. I'm like, man, what's going on here? And I ended up going, confirming zero. Yep, zero is good. It was all me. This has, I believe it's the Geisley, like, national match ultralight super special trigger whatever it is and with that it is really light which is fine like especially if you're in your house sitting there charge this thing you're like wall click oh man that's such a nice trigger in application what happens is breathing hard like okay all right bring it on time like man it broke a little sooner than i wanted so I don't know, I ended up dropping some rounds. Overall though, this thing did great. For this, I was shooting the Ventura Munitions 115, or 115, 150 grain 308. And yeah, functioned flawlessly. And this thing definitely took a beating, threw it around. It's got some nicks, but didn't lose zero, anything like that. For most of the stages, I actually kept it on about two and a half, which was kind of the sweet spot with respect to the distance to the targets. Really want to thank those that made this thing happen. One, Minuteman Munitions, really appreciate the 9mm, as well as the 5.56 and the Retro Division. Venture Munitions, that 150 grain, definitely did a great job for me in that rifle. No issues whatsoever. If I missed, it was absolutely on me. It was not the ammo or the rifle. And Weapon Outfitters, appreciate you getting me down there to go participate in this. If you want to check out Desert Brutality, the best way is actually over on InRange TV. One, they will give updates as it comes up to include possibly a Winter Brutality this year, 2020. And signups go pretty fast as far as it filling up. Easiest way to get in there is actually be a Patreon supporter of InRange TV. So if that's something you want to do, I would check it out. But yeah, definitely had a good time down there. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.